How do? It's Phil Touch here, and today I am playing Three Weeks in Paradise. Uh, Three Weeks in Paradise came out in 1986. Uh, it came out from Microgen, and it was made by Dave Perry, who did... What did Dave Perry do? Dave Perry did Smash TV. Nick Jones, who did Exelon and Akari Warriors. And Neil Strudwick, who did Garfield's Big Fat Hairy Deal. Like I said, Microgen did it in 1986. Uh, Three Weeks in Paradise was the last game in the Wally Week games as well. Um, well. Microgen did the Shadow the Unicorn game, if I remember rightly. Was it Shadow the Unicorn? I think it was. Shadow the Unicorn was a game that was coming with a 16k RAM pack. And that didn't do overly too well for Microgen. And for a matter of fact, Microgen didn't do too much after Shadow of the Unicorn either. Uh, due to the fact money disappeared because of the 16k RAM pack. Now, I had three weeks in Paradise. Uh, and I will tell you right now, I didn't like three weeks in Paradise. Reasons for not liking three weeks in Paradise. Oh, looks like the news has just come in. Breaking news. I didn't like three weeks in Paradise. Uh, the reason why I didn't like three weeks in Paradise is because it annoyed the living heck out of me. You picked up an item, albeit it gave you its name. When you picked up an item with the one or two key, albeit it gave you its name, it didn't really give you a description of what to do other than that. So you'd pick up, like, say, the umbrella, plasma, question mark umbrella, and then you had the fly paper. So you needed a fly paper, injured flies, but you'd be wandering around the map, really not knowing where the flies are. So there's a pail of water, a bucket there. Later on you'll find some uh, pliers and you wander around the map. And this is the aim of the game. You wander around the map with an item, well one or two items, and that's all you can carry. You can't carry more than two items. And you wander around the map, there's a corkscrew there. And you hope to heck that your items will do something in that room so I I had like I say I had this game so I know that some where some items are and what some items do I also know where there's some entrances and the entrances in this game show off some of the great British programming uh, and make you wonder what had they picked up off the grass outside and then consumed uh, some simple fact is that picture above you is an entrance to the beach. So you could say, oh, yeah, but Vil, that's funny because it's a beach scene. And look, at it. it's funny that because it's quite smart. Yes. So you jump into that and it's a beach. Well, that is smart. However, when you've jumped into that beach and then you go underwater, there's a plug down there, which then leads to a secret underground base. You could say, oh, that's clever because it's like a secret underground base like James Bond. Well, all right then, but then when you've been out of that underground base and you're still underwater in a cavern, and then you come out of that cavern, you leave, you then back on the surface, in a bamboo hut. It's just odd. There's oddities all over it. It's that and the casual racism of a black person with a bone through his nose smashing you over the back of the head. You know stuff like that. The aim of the game of Three Weeks in Paradise is that you are Wally, as normal, and you've got to save your son. I think it's Wilma is your wife, and Herbert is your son. So that's what you've got to do. You've got to go around this tropical island, picking up bits of tat, and going around this entire island, and solving puzzles. So I've picked up the pliers, and... And I know these pies open this gate. So, on to the next bit. I remember small bits. The problem I have with this game is the only way to complete it is if you know the solution. Uh, now, the solution was in your Sinclair and the tip shop, and it was in Sinclair user. I don't know if it had in Crash. I wasn't really a Crash reader. Uh, but I know it's in your, I'm sure it was in your Sinclair in the tip shop. Now, to me, to play a game, to have to have the solution to play a game, 
really defeated the entire game. Now, I'd understand if it was a text adventure and you got stuck, but to play an arcade type game seems a bit crap, really. So, I didn't really like it. To me, this was a lot of wandering around, picking stuff up, wandering around a lot more to find if it opened the door or did something or deterred a monster or whatever. It wasn't fast. What The music in the background and the objects on the screen could slow down the game and still does. Even now, it still does. It's not exciting. <laughs> it's dull. Uh, I couldn't give this to any of my children. It's not like it's not like Attic Attack where I could give them that, explain what you've got to do, and they'd enjoy it because it's fast, uh, enjoyable, colourful. They could, they'd love this. This, it's dull and plodding, and doesn't really make much sense. Uh, there's a nice feature of the colour. You notice there's a colour clash going on with Wally. There's a nice feature where you can turn that off. Other than it being bright, colourful, and I don't know. What other nice things can I say about this game? Uh, map looks interesting. Other than that, there's nothing much else I can say about the redeeming qualities of this game. Uh, uh, I don't know. The music on occasion can make you giggle. There's nothing really overly impressive to say that this game should be in the top 100. I'll be honest. But it's coming to the end of this video, so keep your eyes open for number 75, which will be the top 100 of November 1991. We would have gone through the first 25 games on the list. But I'll say goodbye for now. TTFN. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. Cheerio.